In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Join Apostle John Udo today as he teaches the Word that was with God and is now with us for our transformation. Apostle John Udo, worth hearing. Oh, sing it now. And I saw something in the spirit realm while singing. I saw people's skins changing like being renewed. The old skin going off and brand new skin. Beautiful, loving, glittering, appearing on them. There is a transformation going on upon this mountain. There's a transformation within that is even manifesting without. Lord, we receive the transformation. We receive the transformation. As we look at your word, living sacrifice. I pray, Lord, that your word will dwell in us richly and bring forth fruit abundantly. I pray for capacity to not just hear the word but to be doers of the word and to reap the reward of practicing your word at all times blessed be God in the highest in Jesus name I pray praise the Lord living sacrifice Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service hallelujah and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me. To every man that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly. According as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body. And all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirits serving the lord i'll take that again not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the lord hallelujah serving the lord verse 12 rejoicing in hope Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Amen and amen. I'll go back to verse 1 of this amazing Bible chapter. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that is, I'm talking to you, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you should do something and what is that thing that was being demanded of the Romans he says that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service hallelujah and so here is Paul speaking to the Romans he said to them there is a part of you that I am demanding for you to present unto God and he specifically mentioned and said present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable sacrifice in essence Paul is saying that our service to God involves both our spirit soul and body our walk with God is not just our about our spirit and our souls for everyone that will walk with God and serve God it must be done both with your spirit your soul and your body hallelujah there is the gospel parading around the world today that it is the spirit that is saved God does not care about what you do with your body once you are born again anything you do with your body does not concern God just enjoy your life as best as you can your spirit is saved and when you die you will make it to heaven That is the gospel of the devil. Because according to scriptures, we are the temple of the living God. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. So anybody that encourages you to defile your body in the name of your spirit being saved is preaching contrary to scriptures. And so Paul must have noticed a dimension where people were claiming to be saved and serving God in their spirit in their soul but there was no evidence in their physical body they were living their lives as they pleased they were refusing to serve God with their body perhaps they only spoke in tongues and said praise the Lord but join a service unit they were not serving in any unit and so Paul began to draw their attention to the fact that their bodies have an important role to play in serving God God does not create anything for the fun of it if he created us as humans with bodies there must be a purpose for the body both in the physical world in our day-to-day -day activities and in serving the Lord God himself who created us so Paul said to them present your body the word present in Greek is paristemi. Present your body. That means exhibit your body. Paristemi. Exhibit your body. Recommend your body. Bring your body before, before God. To stand before him. Yield your body to God. Those are some of the words that present means. So that means you have a responsibility to hand over your body to God. God is not going to grab your body by force and say it is mine. Each and every one of us has to make up our minds that alongside with my spirit and my soul, I am handing my body over to God. To serve God with everything that I have. With everything that I own. With all my life. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body, everything complete, be preserved blameless. So is it possible for the body to be preserved blameless? According to this scripture, the body can be as blameless as the soul and as the spirit unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And so we're going to be looking at some key points in this uh, chapter of scripture. The first point we'll be looking at is present your bodies. And then the second point is a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. And then finally, reasonable service. Reasonable service. So going back to Romans chapter 12 verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Like I have said already, and at the risk of sounding redundant, I'm going to repeat it. It is your responsibility to present your body. God will say, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose life or choose death. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them. Can you see that? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So this is a call from God to us to come out from among them, from the world. Not just with our spirit, but with our soul and our bodies. He says specifically, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That means there are believers and there are unbelievers. Don't be like them. Don't look like them. Don't dress like them. Don't talk like them. There must be a difference between believers and unbelievers. Unfortunately, today, it is so difficult to distinguish between the unbelievers and believers because the believers are the ones playing the role of the unbelievers out there and then playing the role of believers inside church. So you don't know which where to categorize them. But in the days of Paul, Paul was saying there should be a difference. We should look at the believer and know this is a believer. We should look at the unbeliever and know this is the unbeliever. And then he was counseling the believer, don't look like the other ones. Don't dress like them. Don't act like them. Don't respond to issues like they do. Because you are not of the flesh, you are of the spirit. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not find it comfortable to do the things that they do. Glory be to God. It says, what communion does light have with darkness? And what concord does Christ have with Belial? And what part had he that believed with an infidel. I hear some wonderful sisters who speak in tongues saying, uh, the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord has led me to marry a Muslim. He's a Muslim, but he's actually a very nice one. He's very nice. Even though he's a Muslim, he's nice. He has told me that I can be going to church. I always know the end of the story from the beginning. He said, what part doth he that believeth 
have with an infidel. Those are the kind of sisters that they end up having, they become intercessors, but their only prayer point is their husband all the days of their lives. I hope you know there are women like that. Ask them to pray in any program is their husband they are praying for. Because they have a problem on their hands. And so the energy they should put into other things, they keep praying for a man that has determined that he will not repent. He says, and what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. I want you to say, I am the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them. So our bodies are the temple of the living God. And God dwells in us. And walks in us. So if you are asked God's address, which address will you give them inside me? Because according to this scripture, God dwells in us. Do you know why God dwells in us? It's because he has put his light inside us. And God dwells inside the inapproachable light. In him was life and the life was the light of men. So he lighted us up so that he can, we can become his residence. Glory be to God. He doesn't just dwell in us. He's walking. Look, we are bigger than we look. If God can be walking inside you, how big are you? Oh boy. It says he walks inside you. You are a universe on your own. <laughs> Glory be to God. After all, the Bible says that he has made the earth his footstool. So if the whole earth can be his footstool and the Bible says he's walking inside of you. So what, what are you? You are a walking universe that can contain God. God is moving, traveling inside of you. Hallelujah. What a wonder you are. No wonder the Bible says, whosoever defies the temple of the living God, him shall God destroy. It's as bad as that, that anyone who defiles this temple of the living God that you are is marked for destruction. Jesus speaking about little children. Say anyone who offends these little children, it would have been better that a milestone be hanged on their head and they were drawn in the sea than for them to offend these little ones who are the temples of the living God. That's how important you are to God. So he says, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. And don't touch the unclean thing. And based on that, I will receive you into a new dimension with me. Where you can call me father. I will be a father unto you. And you will be sons unto me. Because you have chosen to separate yourself. You have chosen to present your bodies to me. In holiness and in righteousness. Many think they can serve God in their own terms. And so their terms of service is, Lord, I will come to church every Sunday and uh, i'll do this i'll do that accept me as i am but god has terms through which and under which we serve him terms and conditions and so if you don't meet up with the terms and conditions you cannot claim to be serving god and one of the primary terms and conditions is righteousness holiness in your spirit in your soul and in your bodies hallelujah and so job speaking one day in job chapter 31 verse 1 said i made a covenant with my eyes why then should i think upon a maid that man had presented his eyes to god as a living sacrifice and it was a covenant presentation. So he said, I have presented my eyes to God. I have made a covenant with God. Why then should I look upon a maid? So what covenants have you made with God that stands as a force that reminds you 
and help you not to stray away like others. That you made a covenant with your eyes does not mean that temptation will not come. It simply means that you have determined based on that covenant that no matter what comes, you will not yield to temptation. Because many people think once they enter covenant with God, all temptations will disappear. In fact, that's when the temptations will come the more. To try your covenant and see whether you will take a stand for what you believe. My son, if sin has enticed thee, consent thou not. And remember, every warning of God, every commanded of commandment of God carries rewards when they are obeyed. Amazing rewards. Matthew chapter 18 verse 9 says, If your eye offend you, pluck it out. Cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Is that serious? It says if it is your eye that is making you to sin, cast it out. In essence, stop engaging that eye in that direction that makes you to sin. Pluck it away from that direction. If it is your hand, cut it off. Let your hand be detached from that thing that makes you sin against God. I mean, it will be alarming for many people when they get to hell and they find out it was their eye that took them there. It was their hand that took them there. It was the lust of their heart that, that took them there. It was the pursuit of wealth that took them there. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? There is nothing wrong with being prosperous. But the problem is when you get prosperous at the expense of your soul. When you are rich in the things of the world, but you are not rich towards Christ. But those of us that are rich towards Christ, we get the true riches and the true wealth alongside with it according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. So if there are things you need to pluck out that will be a distraction to your true service to God, pluck them out. If your eyes are given to watching the wrong things on your phone, the same phone you are spending your time watching all those mm, dirty things, people are using it to make millions. People are using it to worship God and serve God and get anointing, but you get into the same phone and all you do is to watch all manner of crazy pornographies and the rest of them that corrupts you and defile you and mess up your service to God. The Bible says present your bodies. If you are going to present your body to God, you are going to have to withdraw it from somewhere. You understand? For example, if I'm to present money, who can I present money to here? So if I'm to present money to somebody, people are so slow. Take I thought somebody would have run out to collect it. Come, come, come. So, I had to bring it. It's his. It's his. Yeah. I just want to repeat it. If I have to present this money to him, I have to bring it from somewhere and present it to him in another location. You understand? It's yours. Enjoy it. So, do, do you understand me? So if you are going to present your bodies to God, you are going to have to withdraw it from somewhere in order to present it to him in the right place. So you are going to detach it from the wrong things, from the wrong place, from the wrong feelings and desires. You are going to withdraw your bodies from things that are against the will of God and then hand it over to God. And why do we have to do that? We do that because we have a race to run. And based on the former place where the body was, you cannot run this race and win it. The Bible says to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. First Corinthians 
chapter 9 from verse 24 says know you not that they which run in a race run all but one received the prize so run that ye may obtain first corinthians 9 24 to 27 and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. So Paul is saying, I can do everything I am doing and still be a castaway if I don't bring my body under. If I don't submit myself, present it, bring it under God. So there are so many people that will serve God and at the end, God will be saying to them, depart from me, for I know you not, you workers of iniquity. They were in church. They served God. They said, we healed in your name. He said, I know. We did this in your name. He says, I know. But the basis for which he will say to them, depart from me, is because they were workers of iniquity. And they practiced it with their bodies. And so there is a call to present our bodies to God. If we are going to be able to give God reasonable sacrifices, it starts with presenting our bodies to him so that he can take over our bodies and use it for his glory that song says my body it's your sanctuary my body is your sanctuary purify me like gold so I might be bold to say my body is your sanctuary. Come on, let's take that song together. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your sanctuary purify me like gold so i might be bold to say my body is your sanctuary can you lift up your hands and say lord my body is your sanctuary Say, Lord, my body is your sanctuary. I present it to you. Go ahead and begin to present your body. I present this body to you. I consecrate this body to you. Is your sanctuary. Oh, purify me like a so am I be bold to say my body is your sanctuary. Go ahead, pray that prayer. Present your body to him. Oh, is your sanctuary. Lord, I'm your temple. I present my body to you. My body. I put my body under you. Sanctuary. I subject my body to you. Purify me, Purify like me Lord, gold. like gold. So I hand it all over to you. you Wash me, cleanse me, sanctify me. Your and I see again what I said earlier on. I saw people's skins Purify changing. Me, I saw skins like changing. Gold. They come in new, brand new. So the I old skin, the old skin being taken away. My my body is your sanctuary. Yeah. My body is your sanctuary. Oh, 
my body is your sanctuary. Oh, purify like I go, and so I might be bold to say, my body is your sanctuary. Hallelujah. So number two, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So it says, present your body. How are you to present your body? You are to present it as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. A living sacrifice that has these qualities of being holy and acceptable unto God. That means there are sacrifices that are not holy and there are sacrifices that are not acceptable unto God. A call to serve the Lord is a call to sacrifice. Many of us that are seated here today, we have several important things we should be doing rather than being here. But you sacrificed and came here. So the call to serve the Lord is a call to sacrifice. Those who are not ready to sacrifice cannot serve God. And to serve God is going to be based on how God wants you to serve him. Not how you want to serve him. And God wants you to serve him with the whole of your spirit, your soul and your body. God wants you to serve him with everything you have. With everything you own at every point in time. Many are not ready to let go of things to serve God. You remember that, that rich young man that came to Jesus Christ. And asked Jesus questions, what to do? And finally Jesus said to him, go sell everything you have and come and follow me. And the rich young man became sorrowful because he had so much possessions. And he went away from Jesus. And Jesus looked at him. The Bible says Jesus loved him. Looked at him. He loved him. But the young man couldn't follow Jesus. I wrote a poem. Many years ago. And I tagged it. The 13th disciple. Because I believe that that young man was called exactly in the same way Jesus called Peter, James, and the rest of them. He said, go sell everything and follow me. Just like he said to others, follow me. So that means he called 13 disciples, but one refused. He knew that Judas will pull out. He needed 12, but he called 13. Because he knew Judas will fall out along the way. And then the 12 will be complete. But the one that would have formed that completion turned away because he could not sacrifice his possessions to follow Jesus. A rich young man. Jesus loved him and called him. said, come be my disciples. Be my disciple. And he turned away. And so they were left with 12. And when Judas fell out, they had to cast lots to find somebody else to complete the group Jesus knew what he was doing when he called the 13th guy but he missed out because he was not ready to sacrifice the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me you hear a young man with full beards saying eh, the reason why i don't want to answer the call is that my mother does not like me being a pastor ha. or my family members will start talking and so what you are not ready to sacrifice 
see this gospel we are in today that we are enjoying today men sacrificed for us to be here men resigned from their workplaces women left their families abroad and came over to the jungles of africa to preach the gospel some of them died because of malaria that came from mosquitoes some of them were murdered by all those tribesmen and yet they kept coming they sacrificed their life they left everything and came to africa to preach the gospel and now you are saved and god is asking for a little sacrifice and you cannot give it what if you were among them in those days when you have to sell off the whole property you have just to become a missionary the salvation you have today apart from the blood of jesus that was shed many other people shed their blood in the process of bringing this gospel to us they became martyrs and so they are looking at us from heaven as the cloud of witnesses and if not that people cannot regret in heaven they would have looked at some of us on earth and they will say is this why i killed myself is this why i left my family in america and came and preached the gospel and these people are doing like this and so the call to service is the call to obey the last command of god to do whatever the father wants to sacrifice your personal comfort to sacrifice the things you delight in to sacrifice your possessions just to serve god i had a pastor who said what god took from him was football he used to love playing football and so when it was time for ministry the first thing god told him is stop playing football it was like trying to take food away from his mouth he said he doesn't know why it was football god took from him but he knows he loved football and so he put football at, is it is it sinful to play football it's not sinful i used to be a midfielder myself perhaps i would have been playing for borishos dotmond or what do they call them man you red right pastor is a man you fan <laughs> but god told him sacrifice that one and he sacrificed it and he's firing for god all over the world now god is not telling everybody to stop football he can you see there are some things god tells you that is your personal relationship and covenant with god he can tell you to stop watching watching television so does that mean everybody should stop watching television no is there anybody here that god separated something from you that is not necessarily seen is there anybody here something god took something from you that is not necessarily seen he just said enough leave it and you are looking at it like this like i <laughs> but you left it as a sacrifice to god hallelujah men sacrificed for us to get here and god will continue to demand for us to sacrifice even for our good and for generations to come hallelujah so god might demand you let go of things that you love let go of things that you delight in just to serve him with all your heart and with all your mind and listen for everything god takes from you he brings back abundantly other things to you so you must learn to deny yourself and sacrifice to serve god There must be a willingness in you to deny yourself of possessions of status of even things you love in order to grow in holiness and commitment to God 
Matthew chapter 16 from verse 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew chapter 16 from verse 24 to 26. So, if we are coming after Jesus Christ, we have to deny ourselves. ourselves. Deny ourselves of what? Of the comforts that can stand in the way. God calls some people into ministry, but they're like, I'm not cut out for that. I'm not, I'm not cut out for that. Yes, I know you're not cut out for that. That is how you'll be cut off from other things too. You must deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow him. By the way, taking up the cross, some people call the challenges they are going through in their life their cross. When they are sick, they say, this is my cross. And they carry it. So why are you praying for the sickness to go? When Jesus said, hold that cross. Take it with you all your life. And yet you are praying, it's my cross. But Lord, take it away. No. A woman came to town, an evangelist. She came for treatment. She was very sick. And uh, she was living in the same compound with one of my pastors. And so she was going to the hospital she came to meet her sister, so they took her to hospital, treatment, checkups, kept going. So one day my pastor noticed and said to her, Look, I can pray for you to be healed. Let me pray for you. This sickness will disappear. And she said, No, 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 no. It is my cross from the Lord. The Lord gave it to me. So when my pastor came and told me, I said, Please go back and ask her, Why is she trying to take away? the cross that the Lord gave her by going to the hospital so sickness is not cross poverty is not cross taking up the cross simply means doing away with what God wants you to do away with and taking up what God wants you to take up the assignment God has for you is a cross the mandate God has for you is a cross. For you to carry it is a sacrifice. You are willing to do what others are not willing to do. You are willing to go where others are not willing to go. There are those that think we are mad by coming to northern Nigeria to preach the gospel. Because they feel it's more volatile in the north than wherever they are. But wherever God sends us, that is the safest place for us. Hello. Because like the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. Scripture says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about those that fear him to deliver them. So wherever God sends you is the safest place on earth. It might not be safe for others. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes, you will behold and see the reward of the wicked. And so we take up the cross by going to places God wants us to go. By doing the things God wants us to do. By obeying when it is not convenient. That is a cross. By giving the things God wants us to give. God says, give your land. God says, give your house. God says, give your money. Sow it as a seed. When you do it, it is a cross. And so let's not be saying one sickness or the other is a cross. So he says, take up your cross and follow me. You remember, you remember he that said, follow me, he too is carrying his own cross. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Some of us are too afraid. You are afraid to die. You are afraid to preach the gospel so that nobody will kill you. The Bible says if you save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, hallelujah. 
then you will find that life. Those that are afraid for you saying he will soon die. You will still be alive. They will be far gone. Alive, healthy, serving the Lord your God. In the capacity that God wants you to serve. And you've not seen anything yet. As you are serving here, he's preparing you for greater things, greater days all over the world. Because if you have obeyed him in little things, he's going to commit greater things into your hand. The services you are rendering here, rendering here today, they are preparing you for greater responsibilities. Because the reward for good work is more work. Hallelujah. The reward for good work is bigger works. So there are bigger works he has for you in Australia, Asia, North America, South America, Europe, all over Africa. But you must serve him as a living sacrifice where you are presently. So a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Philippians 3 from verse 7. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Hallelujah. And so, Paul says, all the certificate he acquired, all the qualifications, everything, he put them aside just to serve God. Some people, God called them, they say, I can't spend seven years in the university and then God is telling me to go and do ministry. Abraham was ready to serve God with everything. God told him, sacrifice your son. He didn't tell the wife. He carried the boy to the mountain to sacrifice. Those were men that understood the place of sacrifice. And God swore to Abraham <laughs> that he would be the father of nations. And today we see it manifesting. Because he was ready to sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Remember, not a dead sacrifice. There are sacrifices that smell. The ram died in the house. It's already getting swollen. Then you drag it to the church. As I am presenting my sacrifice. That's a dead sacrifice. There are sacrifices that smell before God. Because they are dead. They stink. But there are living sacrifices. Holy. Hallelujah. Unacceptable. The dead is unholy. Is impure. So, the holiness is what keeps the sacrifice alive. So, when sacrifices are being presented with sin, away from holiness, they are not alive. They are dead sacrifices. The Bible talks about being dead in your sins and trespasses. So, if you are presenting your sacrifices in sin, it's nothing but dead sacrifices. And dead sacrifices have no reward from God. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 5 about the Lamb of God. Verse 6. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Look at it. It says, And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. How can it be slain and it is still standing? He said, The lamb is a slain lamb. But it is standing. That's a living sacrifice. Dead but alive. <laughs> he said he looked at this mystery. 
a lamb that had been slain is still standing. So you and I must come to the place of being dead in Christ and alive unto the Lord. And so just like the Lamb of God, we look like we are dead, but we are standing, serving God. We separate ourselves from the world as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. Because if it is not holy, God will not accept it. If it is not holy, God will not accept it. So when we are presenting ourselves, we are presenting, presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable. The only sacrifice acceptable by God is the holy sacrifice. Some men presented strange fires in the Old Testament and they got judged and killed for presenting strange sacrifices, strange fires unto the Lord. I love the scriptures in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 that says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So Samuel stood one day in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and said unto Israel, Behold, hearken unto me your voice in all that ye said unto me and have made a king over you. I have hearkened unto your voice and made a king over you. And now behold the king walketh before you and I am an old gray-headed man and behold, my sons are with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. He's saying, from when I was a child, you knew me. Up until now. Behold, I am here. Witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox, ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe? To blind my eyes therewith and I will restore it to you and they said thou hast not defrauded us nor oppressed us neither hast thou taken out of any man's hand and he said unto them the Lord is witness against you and is anointed his witness this day that ye have not found out in my hand and they answered him he is witness And so this man was bold enough to stand and talk before people that knew him from when he was a child till when he became an old man. Said, if I have stolen from anyone, speak out now. If I have defrauded you, if I have robbed you, speak out. God is calling for men and women of integrity and holiness to serve him. No wonder the voice of Samuel was so powerful that from Dan to Beersheba, none of the words that he spoke fell to the ground he was a man that had presented himself to god as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which was his reasonable service you see some young pastors given charge of a branch and then all you do is sleep with all the all the beautiful girls in the church sleep with people's wives and so you use the anointing of God upon your life as a license to defile people to mess up the lives of young people who are supposed to grow up to be women of fire and prayer but you've messed up their lives because of the lust of the flesh unbridled lust of the flesh and then you still have the audacity to mount the pulpit and talk about holiness from among them and be ye separate you can't do the things of the world and practice the ways of the world and still claim to be of God is it possible to be holy it 
is very possible because the bible says be you holy for i am holy i never knew any woman i never slept with any woman until i married my wife and till date is only her i know and we continue to know in righteousness what you you hear even among christian brothers body is not firewood where did you get that from what chapter of scripture verse what body is not firewood body is not firewood okay the bible says flee fornication flee run you have to forget your coat while running forget it run for your life because many have been snared by this her ways are the ways of death that's what the bible says many have been pierced in the soul because of immorality and so god cannot commit his daughters into your hand once they are fair and beautiful he has to take them to other pastors because if he puts them under you they are in trouble and so he brings only the ugly ones around you and even those ones are in trouble because your body cannot be controlled listen if your erection is what gives you direction you are in trouble you say my body is doing me my body is doing me which do do your body the bible says present your body that body that is doing you carry it present it as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god you say when it comes upon me it shakes you when it comes upon me it shake me i have to go and do it before my body stops shaking get the holy ghost baptism that it will shake you ah yeah 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 that's a greater shaker just he karakatabu take the other shaking will disappear hallelujah this is very true let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god Samuel was able to stand and talk and nobody could say you did this or you did that and so finally reasonable service the bible says which is your reasonable service that means there is unreasonable service there is unacceptable service many serve god but they don't do it as unto god they serve god with eye service they do it when everybody is watching so that people will say that bro that bro is a servant reasonable service First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 6 says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. When you are told not to sleep it means you should get up and walk don't sleep you are in charge of a unit and we are not seeing evidence any evidence in that unit you are sleeping since you were anointed for that role the department has not improved in fact it has plummeted you are sleeping whatsoever your hand finds to do do it with all your might. Sacrifice and say, this department they have given me, ah, I will walk like I've never walked. Evidence must show. I receive grace. I receive grace. Some years ago, I gave somebody head of a particular department. As led by God. And after a while, I said, everybody write the plan of the quarter for your department submit after a while he had not submitted submitted anything 
I called him. I said, you've not submitted. He said, I don't even know what to write. He was so comfortable. He said, I don't know what to write. I said, okay, I'm coming. I went and got one, prepared it and gave it to him. I said, study it at least. Study what has been written to know how to do it. When I met him again, he said, I don't really understand how to do it. I said, ha. I realized this one was not ready to serve at all. You can't prepare it. The one that is prepared, you cannot use it. Therefore, let us not sleep. Because they that sleep, sleep in the night. And Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. I must deliver. Make up your mind that anywhere they put me, I must deliver. And so we had to withdraw it from him. And he missed out of the reward associated with that service. Exodus chapter 23, as we draw to a close, from verse 24. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. They shall not cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Hallelujah. Such amazing rewards for serving God. Presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service giving your body giving your money giving all your possessions a woman said she was having a great challenge in her life i heard a testimony some days ago she was in an office they refused to promote her for a long time and somebody introduced her to a ministry and said just come be in the prayers listen to whatever the pastor says catch a word from whatever the pastor says don't wait until prophecy is given. Why pastor is preaching and talking? Catch a word. So she said she was in the service that day. The first day, she said she cried all through the service. The second service she went for, she said why pastor was talking. And the man of God began to talk about the benefit of paying your tithe. Say, pay your tithe. If you eat it, it is not enough for you. So why not pay it as a seed that will bring you the harvest? Because that tithe will not do you anything. So she made up her mind to begin to pay her tithe. She said, in fact, she cleared her account that day in advance. Sent it as tithe and began to faithfully pay her tithe. A short while later, and she said she also had the man of God say, one idea from God can transform your financial life. One idea. So she paid her tithe and said, God, that idea, I need it. And then she said a short while later, she was in the office and her boss assigned her a young lady to attend to they were into financial services and the rest of them and after she assigned the lady uh, she did whatever was needed she was escorting the lady out and suddenly and the lady young lady was a billionaire at 30. so she said to the young lady an idea just came to her and she said madam i know you are a billionaire at 30. But there is something I am carrying that can transform your finances. The woman said, what are you carrying? She said, take my business card. Let us talk. There, are, there is something I am carrying that can take, that can handle this your billions for you. And so the woman went home and the woman could not sleep at night. <laughs> How come she's so confident? What is she carrying? And so the lady had to call her by the next day woman what are you carrying she said that's why that's when she remembered that she didn't know what she was carrying she just talked so she said after the call dropped she began to say lord what am i carrying <laughs> <laughs> you
you better tell me what I'm carrying because I have a meeting with this woman. And I must tell her what I am carrying. <laughs> Glory be to God. And so she boldly agreed and the woman fixed a meeting, booked her and her family in a five-star hotel for weekend. Just to come and tell her what she's carrying. So she said with the husband and children, everybody moved into the hotel, enjoyed themselves and she was like, Lord, what am I carrying? And so, the Bible says, don't premeditate what you will say beforehand. For at that moment, the Spirit will give you what you will say. Hallelujah. And so when she sat with the woman and began to talk, she, it just began to come. She just began to tell the woman how her finances can be managed to bring her into new realms of billions. Someone that has not tasted billions is talking about how to enter new realms of billions by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. And uh, she said the woman was so impressed. She didn't even know what she was saying that the woman was impressed. But there was an anointing backing it up. She had played her part by tithing. And so the rest was left to God. Anything she said was wonderful to the woman. And so the woman said, I need you. He said, you need me. Seriously. And so the woman started committing her finances to her. Said, follow me to the bank. There was this transaction that was complicated. She said she followed the woman to the bank. The bankers were showing them the report. And she said, God just opened her eyes to see something on the system that was wrong. And she said, wait a minute, what is this? Why is this one like this? Why is that one? By the time they corrected it, she saved the woman close to $50 million. The woman looked at her and said, you are hired. I think close to $50,000. And the woman said to her, what can I pay you to resign from your workplace? She said, are you sure you can hire me? Ah, <laughs> Oh boy, when you know who you are in Christ, you begin to do shakara. Are you sure you can hire me? The woman said, please, I, I need you. She said, okay, before we talk, why are so and so millions to my account? Let me think about it. Boom, the money entered. Just because she obeyed the word of God, bring the other tithe into my house and prove me now here with you. She said, the woman hired her and gave her a house worth close to a hundred million naira. Take this one. That's where you should be living. Gave her car. She was showing the car key. I can't remember how much millions the car was worth. Began to expose her to the seas of money. She said now she owns houses. Within a few months, she owns houses. She gives out houses. She gives out cars. She Within a few months. Because she understood to serve God with her money. And as she was testifying, she brought a seed for the man of God in check. Forget about the amount. That I heard your word and I acted on it. And my financial life has been transformed. You can serve God with your hands. You can serve God with your money. You can serve God with your brain. You can serve God with everything that you have. And I promise you, according to this scripture, Thou shalt serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless your bread and your water. And he will take diseases far away from you. Listen, as you are serving God, serve him with the consciousness that he will pay you back. Don't say, God, I'm just serving you. I don't need anything. My brother, you need. You need. And he has promised that he will reward. So whether you need or not, because God cannot lie. If you will serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might, he will reward you accordingly. He says in Colossians 3 verse 23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord 
and not unto men knowing that the lord knowing that of the lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the lord christ hallelujah but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done and there is no respect of persons so every man will be rewarded according to his works according to his service he says whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not unto men knowing that you will receive reward from the lord lift up your voices and begin to say lord i present my bodies to you my body to you as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is my reasonable service I pledge allegiance to the Lord with all I am with all my strength come on go ahead and pray that prayer to God you are left with your God right now for the next few minutes to consecrate and dedicate yourself to give to present to to him your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service I allegiance to the with all my strength with all I am, I will seek to honor His commands. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. It is time to pledge allegiance to the Lamb. And say, Jesus only, Jesus ever. I wake up from my sleep and choose to serve the Lord with all my heart and with all my strength. I come out from among them. I separate myself unto God. I will go. Whatever you give to me, I will do it with all my heart, with all my might, and with all my strength. La tapus de que shune me rapaka. I have made up my mind, and there is no turning back. Ele vos macai le brega com sempre de brega pule que sou porque tu tia. The Bible says, "But you shall receive power." After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, beginning in Jerusalem. And unto Judea, and unto Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Listen, this is just the starting point. And if you will serve it with all your heart in this starting point, we will take you from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Oh my. 
my strength. Ele pas mission. Ele pas mission. Ele vrai mais ça vous de le Jésus pour prakatar. Ah, c'est pas la dama da jabala na na na. Whatever you need to let go, let it go. Because this is a high calling, a high calling to serve the Lord with all that you have. Qui peut me comprendre pour ce Dieu? Est-ce que je crois que ce que tu ne peux pas me Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. We consecrate our lives to you. We present our bodies to you as living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable unto you. Which is our reasonable service. Lord, have your way. Lord, help us. Lord, lead us. Lord, guide us. We cannot do anything of our own strength. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We have laid our hands on the plow. There is no turning back for us. We will serve God until the day of our death. We will serve God until the rapture happens. We will serve God in the day, in the noon, and in the night. We will serve God under the rain and in the sun. We will serve God whether it is convenient or not convenient. We will go anywhere you want us to go. We will do anything you want us to do. You are the bishop and the shepherd of our souls. We are the sheep of your pasture. We are all yours, Lord. You've been blessed by this ministration. Follow Apostle John Udo on Facebook at Apostle John Udo. To follow on YouTube, type John Udo Ministries. If you need prayer, counseling, deliverance, or follow-up, call Plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one and remember all things are possible.